So as I already mentioned, thank you guys for coming down here. It truly is an honor. I'm excited to meet a lot of you over the next four days, uh, or maybe even five or six days for those of you that are staying here for an extended period of time. Now, what I want to share with you today are basically three simple stories. Three things that I've picked up along the way that really helped me. Helped me live the life and create the life that fulfills me, that excites me, and that fuels me. And I hope that some of those things might also spark an idea in you that create a change. Because if we achieve that, I think I've accomplished a lot. So, the first thing that I wanted to talk about that you see on the next slide is I want to start with a dangerous question. Because I think when you ask the wrong questions in life, you can get the wrong results. It's all about the questions that we ask ourselves. Albert Einstein always said, if I want to solve any problem, I would spend 99% of my time thinking about what question to ask. Because the solution will present itself when you ask the right question. So I start out with a dangerous question, because this is a question that I see a lot of people asking themselves. So what you will notice is, and what you're probably wondering by now is, what is, the next, what is this question that I'm talking about? Who here wants to know? <laughs> I'm glad, because I'll give you the answer. This question created a lot of challenges for me in my life. And the question is, the question is, what is my life purpose? How many here have asked themselves, what should I do with my life? I know I have all the time. But I find that a really, really, it can be a really, really bad question. Because a lot of us, we go through life and we think, we get the answer to this question, then everything will be so much easier. Because then I know what to do with my life. But I'll explain to you why for me that wasn't the case. And maybe you can also replace this with a different question. So on the next slide, what you will, Notice is that this is basically this question, what is my life purpose, can be as useless as most company mission statements. You can see on the cartoon, if you can read it, it basically just says more. <laughs> I want more out of life. Or I, a company wants to do more of what they're already doing. So even if you came up with an answer to the question, what is my life purpose? Let's just say my life purpose is to improve other people's lives. That's a beautiful statement, but how does it help me? What should I now do with my life? It's not so simple. So we need to keep pushing a little bit further. So on the next slide, uh, you can move right along, is I discovered the struggle with this when I went to the Stanford University. I was really fortunate to get into Stanford's MBA program, which is a fantastic program. I mean, the caliber of people that I met there, it's truly an honor to be among such a group of smart people. These are people that have worked really, really hard their entire life, and they were all lucky enough to be there. I say lucky enough because, in a way, it's a little bit of a lottery. There are so many people that apply that are amazing. These are the people that got in. Well, when I was at Stanford, we had many conversations about, hey, why are you here? What do you want to do with your life? Well, these are really smart people. They've worked really hard. They had a very specific goal of getting to the Stanford Business School. But at least half of the people there, it's like looking deer in the headlights. They don't know. They don't know what to do with their life. They can't figure it out. And I was no better when I first arrived at Stanford. I don't know what to do. What is it that I want to do with my life? And that question is so overwhelming that a lot of people stop asking, and they don't come up with a different question, and then they just start making choices that are not very good choices. Now, what you will see is there's a curse that we all have. All of you here in this room have many, many talents. You're very, very smart, which means automatically there's many things you can do with your life. 
as I mentioned one example, if you created and said, my life purpose is to help improve people's lives, I could do that by joining the Peace Corps. I could do that by joining a company that I think is working on some uh, wonderful new medical products that help people cure diseases. There is so many things that you could do that the question, what's my life purpose, doesn't help you make a choice. And I call it the curse of choice. The more options we have, the more overwhelmed you get. Because you can do an internet business here, you can join another company here. What do you really want to do? So the tragic thing that I saw a lot of people do, that is, I call it tragic because it's sad, because it's people not living up to their potential and people not serving humanity in their best ways. Because they don't know the answer, they do this. They settle and follow the herd. At Stanford, it goes like this. What company are you interviewing with? What industry is hot? Oh, I'm also going to go into venture capital. I'm going to go into private equity. I'm going to go into investment banking. I'm going to go into consulting because, well, that's how I can pay off my student loans really quickly. That's how I can make the most money. That is a really promising career. But the heart isn't there. Now, a lot of those people just don't end up being really fulfilled, end up being happy. So what's the alternative? Ask yourself a different question. And the question that I would ask myself is, what do I love to do? Now, we have all heard this question, and you can say it's a cliche, and you can say it's common sense, but I think the biggest problem that a lot of us struggle with is, we don't listen to common sense, that's why people have to repeat it. How many here have heard, kind of, ask yourself, what do I love to do? Now, when you watch your children, you can tell what your kids love to do. Because they gravitate to the things that they enjoy. They gravitate to the things that they truly want to do with their life. Somewhere along the way, we learned, and this is the bad programming, that we have to get a job. You have to go and study something that is promising, something where you can make money, something that so you can provide for your family. I say do all of that and make sure it is something that you truly love to do. Do not settle. Do not settle until you are there. The, one of the examples is, and I mention this as an example because it's cute, because 25 years ago, I was really, really into video games. Loved them. I think they're so fun. Then I stopped. But 25 years ago, I really liked that. I started creating and teaching myself how to do animations online on a computer. This was before high school. I was just 12 years old. And my parents always said, why are you wasting your time with that? There's no future in that. Get a business degree. So I got a business degree. I did not pursue this. Today, the video game industry is bigger than Hollywood. Could I have turned my passion into a career? Sure. Maybe this wasn't as fulfilling or meaningful as what, I, for example, I'm doing right now. But that's OK. The important thing is that your heart is truly in it. Now, when I was at Stanford, I had already learned enough that it was time for me to choose what I love. So instead, what I did after Stanford, that you see on the next game, I also love the internet. I think it is absolutely the most amazing technology transformation that I have witnessed in my lifetime. And it is something that I could take a part in. I'm not a rocket scientist. I'm not an engineer. I cannot build magical new things. But the internet, I thought, it just changes everything. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist in that sense. This is where, even as a business person, you can have an amazing impact, and I love that. Now, I had somebody pay for my Stanford MBA, the Boston Consulting Group. I was incredibly grateful for that, but I would have had to go back to them for two years. So I did a really scary decision, because my parents, I don't come from a family with money. And I said, I would, the only reason I would go back is because of money, because they paid for my degree. But I had already learned that it's so important to do what you love. So I decided to go to eBay, go $100,000 into debt, and do what I love. 
because I loved the internet and I knew I wanted to build a career in that. I knew I wanted to kind of, this was the future area that I wanted to master, that I wanted to become active in. And so that's what I did. After two years, Vision quickly mentioned the story, after two years I got disillusioned because to me, it's also about meaning. When eBay started, they really cared about connecting buyers with sellers, helping small businesses, etc. By the time I was there, they just cared about money and making the next quarter's number because they were a public company. So I, my heart wasn't in it anymore. I felt like they were more serving the shareholders first and not the customers first, which I think is the wrong way of running a business. So I wanted to jump in and do my own business. So I took the plunge. I started my company with Vision. And on the next slide, you will see that my first apartment that I lived in didn't look like much. The picture doesn't look great, but I was living in a little closet spending about 400 a month on rent because I wanted to bootstrap myself. Pursuing my dream came first. Doing something I love came first. And there is something beautiful that happens. Three things happen when you do what you love. And those three things are so important and you all want them, but you can only get them truly when it is doing something that you love. The first thing is you will have an abundance of energy. Now, how many here think that having a lot of energy is important? I think it's vital. I think it's critical in life because you want to be energetic with your family. You want to be energetic in your work. Now, how many think it's easier to have a ton of energy when you're doing what you love versus when you're doing what you hate? Now, how many of here, even though you know that, have at some point or another pursued jobs where you just couldn't stand it? Now, it's okay, but it's once we have that knowledge, I think it's time to make a change. Now, there's another way of also getting energy. I think doing what you love is most important because we spend most of our lives doing, working. Now, the beauty is when you are doing what you love, it feels like play. You get to be a kid again. Kids have fun. They don't complain that it's Monday. They love Mondays. I love Mondays. I love every day for different reasons. I love Saturday to spend the whole day with my family. I love Monday because I get to do what I love also. But you get more energy. Now, how many would like to get one extra hour every single day? How many think that would be cool? I can give you that hour, but I can guarantee you that all of the hands that are raised, very few of them will actually do what I just recommend. Again, it's sad, but most of us, even though sometimes the answers are pretty simple, we don't do them. Here's what I've discovered. I used to sleep eight hours a day. I don't use an alarm clock. I just sleep however much my body needs because uh, I think sleep is really, really important. But then I started something else. I started exercising in the mornings. Every morning when I get up, I exercise. And something crazy happened. I exercised for maybe sometimes just half an hour, really good, solid exercise. And my body, sleep. I sleep way less. Now I exercise half an hour. I need two hours less sleep. So then even with showering and all of that, I've gained two hours basically. Let's say one I spend exercising and then showering and another one I've just gained. And I'm healthier and I have more energy. So that works for me, but I said all of you want an extra hour, we'll see how many of you are actually willing to do what it takes. But it's right there for the taking, for whoever wants to have it. Now the next thing that it's also super important. You've already heard about that. I'm a huge believer in intuition, in following your gut, in doing what feels right. We all have that language. Now, how do you really get intuition? Again, when you're doing what you love, I think you open yourself up to more information. Whereas if you're doing something and you're like, man, I cannot, don't like this job, I'm so miserable, and it's just like you get in that bad. How many think in that state of mind you can be intuitive? I think it's almost impossible. But intuition is so important. Should you hire this person? Should you marry this person? Should you go into a joint venture partnership with this person? Is this the right job for you to do? All of these are really critical questions and we cannot answer them with logic. You can make a pro and con list and try all day long but if you can feel it in your heart, 
That's intuition. And the more you do what you love, the more intuitive you become, the better decisions you can make as a business leader or as a father or as a mother or whatever it is that you're doing right now in life. Intuition is a, can be a huge ally for you, for your life, and you open yourself up to that when you do what you love. Now, the last thing, which I think might be the single most important thing, is perseverance. Because... I had it, in some sense, pretty easy. I've always worked pretty hard. That's how I got my good grades. And then in my jobs, I rose really fast. You heard about my success at eBay. I got acknowledged. Then I became an entrepreneur, and boy, did I get kicked in the face. I wasn't used to getting kicked in the face. I wasn't used to failing. I wasn't used to just falling down. I did that a lot as an entrepreneur, all the time. Because you put yourself out there. And I will tell you that it can be hard, but when it's what you love, you're not just in it for the money, so who cares? I'm doing what I do because I love it, because I contribute, because I grow. In every challenge, I can say, bring it on. What am I going to learn from this? Perseverance is so important because things are harder than you ever expect, but if it comes out of... a center of love, out of passion, because you are just in it, then you have a different mindset for it and you don't give up. All these statistics that 9 out of 10 startups fail, well, I would actually look at that and break that down and ask the people that are in it and doing what they love, is it still 9 out of 10 or is it just people are so hungry for the get rich quick here, I don't have to do anything syndrome, they all fail because they give up at the slightest, as soon as it gets hard, as soon as it gets difficult, as soon as the results are not there as quickly as you expected them. But if you're doing it because you know you love it, and this is what you really want to do, you can just go through anything. And you have and can develop the mindset of never giving up. And that's kind of what you develop with this. So perseverance is critical. And I became a lot more humble the moment I became an entrepreneur because, boy, did I have challenges that I never expected and never thought would meet me along the way. Now, next is, what do you do if what you love changes? Well, I think that's a great question because things are not always the same. And it's okay. If what you love changes, then change what you do or Dig deep inside and ask yourself, why did you do it in the first place? I would pause for a moment before saying, change what you do, because I think so many people, they run from conflict, and then they think they don't experience it again. Whether in business or in relationships, you can be with a partner and run and go into a new relationship and think, oh, I won't have these problems in the new relationship. Well, before you do that, look truly at yourself and be honest with yourself and see what is it that I need to learn? My sensei and martial arts instructor, when I was young, taught me one really important lesson that sunk in so deep that I'm so incredibly grateful for. And he said, no matter where you move, you take your baggage with you. And that means if you change what you do, all the problems, kind of the things that you need to work on as a person, you cannot run away from yourself. You can try. And a lot of people spend their lives trying but you won't succeed at that. So, but then again, I do believe that passions change. I don't think this is my last company in my life. I don't think it's my last profession in my life, and that's okay. When I discover a new passion, I'll be open to that, but I will always make sure that what I'm doing is what I love. And lastly, then you can reinvent yourself, and most importantly, remember what comes first. For me, it's my beautiful wife, Michelle, and my 14-month son that you see there, Felix. They come first. I love Mind Valley, I love you guys, but if they need me, they got me. And that's important to me, and that's just a rule that I have done in my life. And you need to figure out what matters to you in your life. I've spent a lot of time working. I was single for 10 years because I worked, and I didn't want to compromise, I didn't want to sacrifice my dream career. But I realized I wasn't any more fulfilled. Right now I'm more fulfilled than I have ever been because I've changed and shifted my priorities. So that's also a, a lesson I wanted to share with you. So 
That's it. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. I hope you got something out of it.